Trying to make it potentially a one possession game. Up and under Pacey's. That's what Pickering they need right there. one here. Up to Chin, who throws it down. Minkler, good ball fake, gets to the 10, count it, and the foul. Two buzzer beaters to his credit, goes down the lane, double pump. There it is. Cut! Another! Hey, another! It and it's a steal by Soak. Soak to the rim. He's got the layup, and Bedford's got the lead. McGee drives, strand open. Three corner up and in. Wow. And they come up with a steal. O'Connell looking for the flush. Big guy shoot twos. Step back, Castro trying to tie the game. Juanena up the sideline, Castic way, double pop. Chop it in, up and in. Trying to find Bono. Oh, it's oh my Mike with the steal. Mike is going to run up the court. Well, hello everyone and welcome here to Wyndham. Nick and Astis, Justin Gorham with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Beals Insurance, Nashua South, and Wyndham. Two Division I playoff contenders meeting in this early season December affair. Week number two statewide. Both squads come in with identical one and one records. Nashua South, led by longtime head coach Nate Mazzarol, had his team on a fall late in the season. Back in March, a Final Four appearance for the Purple Panthers for the first time in a while. They bowed out in the semifinal round. Wyndham, kind of a new look, especially on the sidelines. The seven-foot hometown kid is back. Carson DeRoger is the first-year head coach. He's a big fella. He and he had the Jaguars fella. winners in their season opener over Spalding and then almost pulled the upset on the road at Exeter. Back on Friday night, that was a 55-54 loss for the Jaguars. So both teams are 1-1. One one. Both teams, as we know, like to get up and down the floor. And this one should be close throughout as we get set for the tip at the bottom of the hour. I'm always curious to see how new young coaches coach. What are their, their ideals? What are their you know reasons for doing things? Do they press? You know, oh, yes, he's a big fella. He's a seven-footer walking in. He may, he'll be the tallest coach in the state, so you have that. Um, I was pretty close at one point. Oh, we have our officials, my school principal there, the official. Um, so it should be it should be an interesting game. I want I'm, I'm just trying to watch warm ups and see who has athletes and you know you can kind of you can't tell right now with Wyndham because they're sort of running a little shell a shell drill during warm ups, which is interesting. It's a good drill to run. And then uh, you have Nashua South just shooting your traditional layups. I can watch and see if guys can shoot, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Well, we mentioned the new head coach. There he is, Carson DeRoger, seven-footer, raised in Wyndham, played at Central Catholic down south of the border in Massachusetts, and then went on to, well, some big-time NCAA basketball as he had stops in or at two different schools, Wake Forest and Providence. So two years each. Certainly has the pedigree on the sideline, you see him there chatting with Nashua South head coach Nate Mazzarol. So these two teams looking to get after it and get back on the winning side of the ledger. Both teams trying to improve to two and one. When we come back, starting lineups, national anthem, and then game time at the bottom of the hour. Nashua South and Wyndham. Coming up next, it's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com.
The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another athletic program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Well, back here in Wyndham, Nick and Astis, Justin Gorham with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Nashua South and Wyndham, Purple Panthers, hoping to ultimately go back to another Final Four in Division I. Wyndham in year one, under Coach D. Rose, looking to get to two and one tonight with a win. What do we look for tonight, Justin? Well, I'm I'm always curious to see if, if teams decide they want to press, if they're going to run. You know, what kind of defense are you going to play? You're going to come out in the zone. Are you come, going to come out in the man. It depends on your philosophy. They were going over the shell drill, that being Wyndham in warm up, which indicates they probably will play man. You know, you teach you teach man defense with a lot of zone principles if you're going to do it right. So. I, I always like to find out what people, what teams are going to do on defense. That way, I know what I can do on offense. You know, you don't try and change too much, but but that's what you kind of want to find out. Two players to watch tonight on the Nashua South side. Two veterans in the backcourt: Joshua Caruso and Zach Castigway. Speaking of Castigway, we saw him hit a game winner a year ago on a nice fading shot in the corner, and he can score. In bunches. On the inside, it'll be Daniel Karavanic. One to watch, number 33 in purple. On the other side, Benjamin Roy. He's a senior forward. Should be active under the glass tonight. Jack Murphy, a junior. Slated for one of the backcourt spots. He'll have the ball in his hands a lot tonight. And a threat to score, Jack Kutrobis. Another junior in the backcourt. Will Collins is a senior. Brings some toughness to the squad. We mentioned Roy. And rounding out the five for the Jaguars is Jack Begley. Another senior with some length. So anybody's guess as we close in here on the tip. All right, let's go down to the floor for the National Anthem. Well, there it is, the national anthem. 
setting the stage for the opening tip. Well done here in Wyndham, as usual. Nick and Astis, Justin Gorham with you. A growing crowd on the other side of the gym. That includes a festive student section. About three or four rows deep. A lot of red and white. Happy holidays, folks. Of course, here we are broadcasting live with six days to go before the big holiday. Oh, yes. Very exciting times. We see a couple giant faces over there, which are always fun. I love a good giant face that kids hold up. Yeah, the cardboard cutouts oh, are yes. popular. A giant face. The holiday season is upon us. And folks still arriving for this 6.30 start. All right, so game number three for Wyndham in the DeRose era. The seven-foot head coach standing begin. His counterpart, his counterpart coach Mazarol, seated at the head of the Nashua South bench. This one is up in the air, and we're underway here in Wyndham. South will open up in a man-to-man -man defensively. A three-pointer is on the way. No, Roy, an offensive rebound. Had it blocked. And the loose ball ultimately ends up with the Purple Panthers. Good rebound early. Wyndham also is in a man, so we kind of figured that watching them warm up. There's a runner for Caruso. The baseline teardrop won't go. Already you can see good help side defense. Wyndham was on the baseline helping out with the teammate that got beat, maybe forced baseline. Here's Begley. Got the step, hangs, and scores. Well, a good first step there for the senior forward, Jack Begley, who grabbed the rebound on the other end. He's off to a good start in the scorer's book. His team out in front, 2 nothing. South trying to get on the board. Instead, they turn it over. Down the lane with a left-hand shot that will fall. Lovely left floater. Jack Kutrobus. So a good start here for Wyndham at home. And they lead 4-0. Back to our cut. Castigway off the glass. Can't get it. More good help. Kutrobus' his second rebound. Baseline drive is cut off. Wyndham looking to extend... The lead instead, Castigway with a steal. First takeaway for the Purple Panthers, converted at the other end as Castigway hits, despite hitting the floor, to get South on the board. Good hands, double team, good help. So Nashua South also playing good help defense, which teams don't do very often anymore. You can kind of see when teams help each other out on defense, sometimes double the ball, a lot of turnovers happen. Players turn the ball over pretty easily with that when that happens. Nearly two minutes in. Baseline jumper is too strong. Karavanic has his first rebound for South. Caruso, a little floater. Tip back out, offensive rebound. Tim Stavelli in the corner. South going to take their time. Now a blow-by move, but the pass deflected and stolen. As Roy comes away with it in the lane. And now Wyndham going to pump the brakes. Two and a half gone by. Good the refs haven't made those calls. Sometimes when you reach in, they'll call those fouls early. No foul either way yet. Rebound tipped to Caruso. Caruso in attack mode lost his footing. Somehow survived the fall. And now a jump ball is called along the sideline. A way to get on the floor. Coaches love when players get on the floor. That's Begley sacrificing the body in front of the Wyndham bench. You got a rise out of his Jaguar teammates. You see the jump ball called. If anybody's watching out there young that plays basketball and you're trying out for your team, get on the floor. If you dive on the floor and you play good defense, coach is going to find a place for you on the team and find a way for you to play. Caruso again slips. It's the third South turnover here early. Begley, two big steps and a banker. That Euro step, Nick, is baffling to me. I always looks like a travel. I know it's not, but man, I can't get a handle on the Euro. Able to maximize the footwork and a pretty looking finish. Meanwhile, a foul is going to be called here against the Jaguars. First team foul either way as Begley gets hit with his first. As we get a look at that Begley layup a moment ago. Tough shot. Defended well by the big fella. Wyndham, they took Exeter to the wire back on Friday night. That was at Exeter. 
Blue Hawks did survive in the end, 55-54, as we see the first free throw for Caravanic fall. I saw Nashua lost early to Memorial by eight, but Memorial is supposed to be much improved this year, I think. And the Crusaders have some athletes. They always do. They always have athletes. Yeah. Sometimes they lack size, but they always have athletes. And they put up nearly 80 opening night against Nashua South and made a statement. Meanwhile, Coach Bazarol is going to go to the bench for the first time as Caravanic comes away with a block. Second effort, though, is going to go for Roy. Ah, good offensive rebound. After the block, you got to make sure you find somebody. Find a man, box out, look at the rebound. You can't let him get multiple offensive rebounds. Prince Isaac and DeBeezy has checked in for Nashua South. Spread the floor, almost go one-on-one. -on -one. That almost looked like a 1-4 low, or he was just going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Midway through this first quarter. Little two-man game and a pull-up. Well, you like that, Justin, yeah. the 14-foot jumper. I do, because it's very rare. Everybody either shoots threes or you shoot lay layups. You don't shoot the 15, 14-footer anymore. Kutrobis, a couple of field goals early for Wyndham. And the Jaguars have their largest lead. Jump shot up and in. Well, a pretty move. And then a pretty pull up for Zach Castigway. Got the Nashua South fans Man. excited. The JV team seated over to our left. That was major excitement for an open shot. Jump shot, back iron. Tapped out to Caruso, wants to push. Crossover, right hand fade, won't go. Good outlet pass. Up the floor. And then a wraparound feed, but the layup is short. Roy is there, had it blocked. Roy going to stay with it, blocked again, and then a foul. There's that multiple offensive rebounding we talked about. Now, you leave your big fella down there, Kara Janik. You leave him down there by himself. He's trying to get a rebound, and there's all, I mean, multiple offensive rebounds after a blocked shot. Got to help him out. So Caravanic going to pick up his first and the team's first with just over three minutes remaining here in this opening quarter. Boy, Roy has been a force on the glass. Absolutely. Four rebounds already, three of them at the offensive end. Going to leave the first free throw short, however. They've had a couple two-on-ones, three-on-ones. They pushed the ball well. Out outlet pass was caught in the air on the bounce and just zipped down the floor. So they're trying to push the floor and get layups early. Rose is going to knock it down. So one for two trip for the Wyndham Big. And the lead pushed back to five at 11-6. Coach Mazzarol on his feet. Calling for a back door, but it's broken up. Taken away in the lane. Wyndham again looking to push, and there's the left-hand finish for wow. Jack Murphy. We're seeing multiple left-handed players with nice finishes at the basket. Floaters and layups. <laughs> love it. I love it. Timeout on the floor. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Beals Insurance. Locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. And finally, by the New Hampshire Tomahawks Showcase and Development for College Lacrosse. Visit nhtomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. Nick Anastas, Justin Gorham, live from Wyndham High here on a Tuesday night, week number two statewide in our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Both teams looking for their second win early on in the campaign. Yeah, they're both playing pretty well. I think Wyndham a little bit better right now at home. Finding ways to make steals. Defensively, they're doing a really good job defending the backdoor cuts, the, you know, fronting the post, the low post, helping each other out on defense. There's a runner. Caravanic, no. On the glass again is Begley. Wyndham another stop. A chance for their largest lead with a three. Begley too strong from straight away. Ball on the floor. Ends up with South. Shane Lemire had it, but lost it. Fifth turnover early for South. Three-pointer in the hole for Katrobus. He's the game's leading scorer with seven, and the lead is 10. 
for the first time as we hit the two-minute mark in this opening quarter. Yeah, she was having a hard time getting open shots. Even Caruso. that was a tough shot. That one's in and out. The rebound belongs to Katropis, his fourth. Katropis into the paint. Sets up a three for Caden Bouchard. Ooh. is going to knock it down from the wing. The senior just checked in. Able to square, he get looked, square, and ooh, knock it down. He looked confident on that shot. 19-6. South trying to stop the bleeding. Caruso rejected. Second effort. Banker, no. And then finally ripped free for the Jaguars by Murphy. Coach DeRose has got something in mind here. It's a screen for Murphy, a dribble, and a banker. Easy little left hand. Down screen. Down screen, come up, boom, drive to the basket. You know, you might want to talk about switching that screen. Right now they're trying to fight through. Defensively, though, with Wyndham, I'm impressed. Final minute, first quarter. Castigway for three. Around the rim and out, and Begley's on it again. That was almost a shot. You're going, wow, we can't, we can't score. We got to score. But you have 45 seconds left. That's not a great shot, but you're not getting good shots right now. Wide open on the baseline. Good look. Sam Roydoulis, the freshman, in some early minutes here tonight. Knocks down the eight-footer, and it's a 23-6 Wyndham lead. A considerable lead, and I think it, this lead is all about their defense. All about their defense. Nashua South cannot get a good shot. Hasn't got a good shot this entire half or entire quarter. The Wyndham fans chanting defense. South wants the last shot down to 10 seconds. Castigway going to go one-on-one -on -one with Bouchard. Crossover dribble. Fade away on the baseline. Too strong. And the rebound is pulled in by Katrobus. That will do it for the first quarter. The home team comes out swinging. Wyndham, a 23-6 lead early. South looking for a counterpunch when we come back. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Well, Wyndham off to a dream start here on their home floor. Nick and Astis, Justin Gorham with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. There's first-year head coach Carson DeRose, Wyndham native, former NCAA Division I player, and his defense looking good here through eight minutes. That's exactly what this is about. And when you score 23 points, though, that's a lot of points for a quarter. You know, when I was trying to, when I was coaching, trying to score a lot of points and just trying to outrun everybody, that's what we look for to get between 20 and, you know, 25 points a quarter. If you did that, you did a good job. And, yeah. you know, you may give up some points, but you know, now we're to one, kind of looks like a one, two, two, three, two zone. Yeah, two, three zone. Two, it's like three a two, zone. three zone for the first now. time here from Coach Mazzarol as the Purple Panthers play the entire first quarter in the man to man set. Now let's see what Wyndham has, you know, high post, open at the high post. Is that Instead, corner? Begley is in the corner. Line drive, three too strong. A weak side rebound for Caruso, is fourth. He's going to pull the trigger himself and knock down a deep three. He needed that desperately. Desperately needed that. Josh Caruso, the returning starter from a squad that went to the final four a year ago. It's like now a 3-2. Meanwhile, back door, layup no. This one pinned off the glass, and Caruso tracks it down in the corner. 
Caruso is everywhere. He's going to go to the hole. Take on two defenders. Count it and the foul. Well, Josh Caruso scored five points in 59 seconds here. Got five, to begin the second quarter. Rebounds. He's got five rebounds Man. and a chance for one more at the line. The South hoping to chip away at this big Jaguar lead. They need to zone will help because now your team has to adjust because they've played man-to-man -man the entire quarter. So Wyndham's going to have to adjust. They've had two open shots. They just didn't make them. That little short corner one on the baseline, wide open. So they get the ball where they're supposed to, to, to go with it. But that shot, too, that 10-footer from the baseline, that's a tough shot. Foul, by the way, was on the freshman Sam Roydoulis. So two-three zone, but look how look how high high the uh, the forwards are are coming up. They're coming up really high in the shooters. Boucher for three, no. Begley, yes. There's that zone. Tough to rebound in the zone. You got to find someone to box out. Caruso got the step and the left hand finish. It's all Caruso right now for Nashua South. All Caruso. All eight of his points have come here in the first 90 seconds of this second quarter. Eight of their 11. Roy Dulles whips it back up. Bouchard looks for a man in the corner. Bounce pass across the lane. Comes from Tyler Jordan, the sophomore who just checked in. Roy Dulles Good tried steal. to find Jordan. Instead, it was picked off. Just the second Wyndham turnover. Caruso red hot. Going to give it up. Going to go heat check and give him the ball back. Well, this pass dropped. That allows Bouchard to get on the floor, and ultimately it's a steal. Now numbers for Wyndham, and a left-hand layup won't go. For Jack Petrobus, this one knocked out of bounds. Got to get all those Nashua South guys have to run back on defense, though. You got two guys back trying to rebound. The other guys are watching. I'm telling you right now, Nick, that makes the coach nuts. I bet. You don't want to watch. You want to chase? You, guys forget how many tip tip ins you can get if you chase guys miss layups you chase even on offense you chase and try and get tip ins defense you come down you try and rebound don't leave your guys on an island by themselves Caruso Whoa. for three deep in and out Bouchard the rebound heat check that was a heat check we talked to heat check he's feeling it that was a definite heat check it's a 12 point game here with two and a half gone by second quarter Wyndham yet to trail here in this first half against the zone into the corner for Jordan Three-pointer, no. Begley is there again on the glass, and he's fouled on the way up. But Jack Begley brought his A game today already on his way to a double-double. 6.6 rebounds here he's in this first well. half. He has played well. It, when you play zone, it's, it's very difficult to rebound, too. You know, especially on, on shots from deep. You've got to find someone. You always have to find someone and well, box that's, out. That's the key. Because in a zone, in theory, you're in position. You are, but you, you just sort of watch. And right. then you have to you, you go get the ball, but you still have to find someone, whoever's in your area, match up and try and keep them off the glass. That's why on offense, it's great because you can run in and try and tip balls in and get a lot of things can happen because nobody boxes out. The lead push back to 14. Great job in the passing lane. You made them start their offense way out past the volleyball line. Back door and a ah, travel first. Slid those feet. Slid those feet. That's Samson Ekote. I think that's the junior who did drag the pivot foot there. That's the seventh. Seven turnovers. Yeah, South seven turnover. turnovers. And Wyndham defense continuing to make life. Very difficult tonight. Compared to how many turnovers for Wyndham right now? Just two. Two, two seven to two. And that's going to kill you. Three minutes in, second quarter. Back door for Murphy. One dribble. The J won't go. Weak side. There's Caruso, Caruso. again. Caruso, Caruso. His sixth rebound. Banker was blocked. Never got to the glass. Coming the other way, Kutrobis, 100 miles an hour. Begley with a tip attempt. Now trying to power out for South and losing his footing at midcourt is Aiden Clow. Clow with a good rebound. The sophomore just came on, draws the foul. Second team foul here of the second quarter. I do like the way Wyndham pushes. That's a tough one. He should have, you know, he probably makes that nine times out of ten, that layup. They've had their foot on the gas. Now they don't wait. If they get a rebound, they're out letting trying to get easy baskets quickly. There's a wow. foul. 
But look how far out they're pushing them to start your offense. If you're a team that wants to, you want to try and start your offense at least inside that volleyball line just by the um, by the by timeline. The, by, right? Yeah, right there. you got to just get it inside that. If you start too high, it's really tough to get your offense going. Look how far out they are. Quick hands and a steal for Begley. To the rim, foul from behind. He knew that was coming. He could feel it. It's another turnover. Bacote not happy with the call, but guilty of the over-the-shoulder on the block attempt. So looked like he got him a little bit. And you could tell he was waiting for the foul. He's left-handed. He went, look, he adjusts. I'm going to give a look. Goes look right-handed, back over the, got hit. Over the shoulder, knew the defender was there. Oh, he's right-handed. He looks just like the other. He looks like him and 12. Wait. The 12 is the lefty. He's That's the lefty. lefty. Right, yeah. okay. Although we've seen Begley do it with both hands. Oh, yeah. In absolutely. this first half. Especially inside around the basket. But he is going to shoot a right-handed free throw here and leave it short. Offensive rebound for Roy. Back out. Katropis an open look. No. And then Begley over the shoulder. Ends up out of bounds. Oh, that's a tough one. Tough one. So midway through this second quarter. South. They've trailed by as many as 17. Hoping to cut into this 15-point gap. Caruso has been the man. Yeah, without Caruso, it'd be a 20-plus point lead. Trying to shake off Murphy. Big man is back on the floor. He's going to come into the paint, pivot, and then turn it over. Begley with the steal. And now Wyndham a chance to match their largest lead. Into the corner. Good extra pass. The three around the rim and out. A good Great. box out there for Karavanek. Great ball movement. They had an open shot. Oh, the rip. Get Over the neck. Too anxious. Too anxious to get the ball to the middle. Yeah, got kind of caught there on the left-hand dribble attempt. And that will lead to a Coach Mazzarole timeout as Nashua South wants to talk it over. 28-13. Wyndham been in the driver's seat from the get-go. Looking to improve to 2-1 and one on the season. Yeah, that was pretty close. Tony huh. had his foot down. Or f I don't know about that I thought one. the call was a carry, but they said over no, and they back. They called over and back. and I'm, I, When I saw it, I wasn't sure, but the replay, that was pretty close. I'm not too sure if he was. He made it look like he had his feet there. Feet By down. the way, got a big game coming up on Friday night. We'll be there as Pinkerton takes on Exeter. He had one foot in. Okay. That's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week coming your way three days from now, Friday Pinkerton. night. Exeter. Where are we doing that? At, that is at Exeter. At Exeter. Oh, that's going to be a good one. That will be a good one. The Astros on everybody's short list in Division One. New coach. I've heard right now a new coach for now anyway. And uh, you have size. You have experience. And Exeter is always Exeter, like yep. we talked about before. They yep. always play well. But... We'll see if they do anything different without Dave Chase being there for now. But if Dave comes back, then that'd be, uh, you know, go back to where they play. It'd be interesting to see how they do. We'll be there for a 6.30 tip with our broadcast coming your way at about 6.20. All right. Out of the timeout, Wyndham with the ball and a 28-13 lead. South going to stay in the zone here defensively. That's been the look throughout this second quarter. It looks like a 2-3. Yeah, zone, they've, they've, they've fared a little bit better with the zone. And a steal. Castigway slows down, missed the banker. There for the cleanup is Caruso. Wonder why he slowed down, but he's hoping to get a foul, I yeah. think. I think so. Heads up play by Caruso on the trail, which goes back to what we were talking about, what you uh, pointed out. You know, Al Roy... Follows his own miss, had it blocked. A third attempt blocked again. He's still coming, though. Got to get some help in there. Big fellow, though. Um, Karavanek doing a nice job blocking shots. This one's short. Rebound taken under the rim by Will Collins. Quick shot the other way. Another second chance opportunity is Kutrobis in a crowd pulled it out. Murphy, high arcing three up and in. Big three. They missed a layup on the last one. They got the ball ahead and didn't use the glass. Missed a layup and get a three right back out of it. Wow. Murphy, seven points. 
Jaguars match their largest lead from the end of the first quarter. It's a 17 point game again. We head towards two minutes to go until halftime. Caruso into traffic. Second chance. No. Good Offensive help. rebound for Josh Tripp. Good help. And we'll stay at this end. Well, Coach DeRose going to go to the bench here. Take his starting center off the floor, at least for the moment, as he has a one-on-one -on -one word with Benjamin Roy. He's rebounded well, too. Three out of the corner is blocked. Trip. Pump fake. Going to pull it down. Backdoor. Castigway. There's great the layup. Great cut. Great pass. It's his third field goal. Little and now pressure. A little bit, yeah, yeah. A little two, bit two, of one. zone here. There's that middle. Wide open. You beat the press at the middle. And they did. And the Jaguars will settle down. Three-pointer. Collins for three. Got to get a hand up. Another Wyndham scorer in the books. Yeah, they can shoot. Get a hand up. Everyone's a shooter, right? Hey, you got to consider now, everyone is a shooter. Seven different Jaguars have scored in this first half. Meanwhile, a foul is called. Nope. As a Cody was hit near the rim, he'll shoot two. That was one of the rare times, though, that they went baseline, and there was no help that time. They kind of left him on an island, no help. And he fouled him. It was a foul, very clear. You got to make the free throws. So Akote misses the first. Meanwhile, Begley is going to return for the Jaguars. Griffin Driscoll, after a short stay on the floor, is going to take a seat. Akote can't get the roll. Goes 0 for 2. The board ends up with Murphy. Coming up in the final minute, first half. Coming up at halftime. A look back at that first half. It's stats, highlights, analysis, plus a Tuesday night scoreboard that should on be. the way as well. It's all coming up at halftime. This one a foul on the floor. Yeah, it looked like it was on the, on the pass. They're not sure if he was shooting or not, but that looked like it was on the pass. Yeah. And they're calling that a shooting foul. Oh, no. Um, it wasn't a step. He was, he was past the ball, and Nashua South has gone back to a man. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it on the replay... Clearly trying to pass the ball, I think. Down 21 was open underneath the basket. So. Sometimes you Kudrobis. can't tell. You can't tell, though. It's okay. Yeah. if, if That's a tough one. In midair, right. In the paint. Kutrobis, no problem on the free throw. It's his first trip to the line. He's played outstanding in this first half. He leads them well. Like, he does a good job. You know, getting the ball in the middle, pushing the ball ahead, looking for wide-open teammates. They're unselfish, though, but when they have open shots, it's catch and shoot most of the time. The guys that are confident and, can, and coach wants to shoot, those guys are catching and shooting. The lead is 20 for the first time. Trying to tiptoe the line. And again is the point guard, Castigway, and a foul is called. I'm going to get the freshman, Radulis uh, with the foul. So the Jaguars are over the limit. And remember oh. the new rule? Shooting two. It's five team fouls per quarter. Shooting no two. No more one and one. It's an automatic two at five. So Castigway makes them pay with the first. It's his first trip to the free throw line tonight. It's a one of the team's better shooters. Got that one as well. So 36-18. And now a stoppage here as I think the clock may have started early. I wasn't sure. It may add that. some time here. It does give Nashua a chance to step up, though, and now they're pressing man full, trying to cut the lead down. You can get it now. Well, not much time to get it down to 12. If you get it down to 12, you feel a little bit better, but I don't know if they have enough time to get it down to 12. Well, they're going to add a little over three seconds, so 45 even remaining. And again, the Jaguars will look to beat the press with the long ball. Up ahead, Katrobis got that one to go and the foul. Boy, a strong finish for the junior guard. Now in double figures with 11. 
Yeah. And a chance for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Absolutely. And Nashua was looking for a charge. Let's take another look at the replay. He was not even close to being there, so I don't see a charge. They want to go. He lowered his shoulder, but he, 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 the, the defensive player wasn't there. In Clough with the foul. That was a good play, a good offensive play, a strong play. Yeah. Katrobus has played strong. A dozen already to go with seven rebounds from the point guard spot. One of the things you can't do, too, when you're, when you're pressing is get beat deep. Just don't get beat deep. Even if you're man pressing, you have to put a guy sort of back that cheats a little bit so you don't ever get beat deep. South may be thinking final shot here. 20 seconds. Coach Mazzarol near midcourt directing the show. Coach DeRose trying to cheer on the defense from one knee. Eight seconds. Castaway nearly lost it. Finds Caruso trying to split a double team. Back to Castaway. Three out of the corner. Too strong. Good the rebound look. goes to Jordan, and that will do it for the first half. Wyndham looking good on their home floor. 39-18. It's their largest lead of the night. They've done it primarily on the defensive end. They've had a number of different scorers on offense. No, they can feel good, though, that, you know, they gave up. Nashville South gave up 23 points in the first quarter. Only 16 points in that quarter. They didn't score very many points, but they only gave up 16. So that's an improvement on your defense from the first quarter. But you've got to be able to score. You've got to be able to score more points if you're going to win, obviously. All right. Coming up in just a moment, a look back at that first half. Stats, highlights, analysis, full recap. And some of the early games starting to get underway statewide in our week number two scoreboard watch. So a lot to get to. Coming up in just a moment. At halftime, Wyndham, a commanding lead, 39-18 over Nashua South. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance. Broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. The New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another athletic program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today.
All right, back here at halftime. Wyndham with a big lead, 39 to 18 over Nashua South. Nick and Astis, Justin Gorham here in Wyndham. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Both teams coming in at one and one. The Jaguars looked like they were ready to go on their home floor, hot shooting in that first quarter. They forced several Nashua South turnovers on the defensive end. And as a result, built up a 17-point lead just eight minutes into the game. Second quarter, South came alive a little bit, led by Josh Caruso's performance. But he played well. He did. He played well. All in all, Wyndham able to weather that storm, break the press, and add onto the lead. So it's a 21-point gap for the first time tonight at halftime with the third quarter coming up. So Nashua South has to come out this half with more energy than they did the first half. You have to figure out a way to not get beat deep on the press. If you're going to press, you have to make sure that you at least can contain them and make them work a little harder to get the ball across half court. Because the one time they came up all the way and, and pressed man, got beat deep, had, uh, Wyndham had a layup, missed it, and then with a follow-up they were able to score. But uh, nonetheless, if you're going to press, you've got to make sure you just contain them a little bit. And in terms of Wyndham, they want to increase their lead and if they keep playing defense like they have in the first half, then they will increase the lead because they're helping each other out. Their hands are in the passing lanes. They're communicating with each other. And offensively, they keep pushing the ball. So when, when Nashua takes a bad shot or gets a bad shot, because honestly, t good shots have been tough right now for Nashua. Yeah. So Wyndham just keeps taking advantage of those, getting layups, getting breaks, and getting easy baskets. Some of the numbers from the first half. Jack Katrobis, the junior point guard for Wyndham, leading all scorers with 12 points. You and I have him for seven rebounds as well. Jack Begley has been big. Also working on a double-double with nine points and seven boards. I think we had Caruso for Nashua at eight and eight. Eight points and eight rebounds. Yep. So he's done. He played well. Without him, you know, he's got, you know, they have 18 points. He has eight of those, and he's been rebounding his buns off. So, yeah. He's played hard. I think of all of their team, their entire team that has played so far, he's the one player that I would go, ooh, he came to play. Yeah. He's into it. Zach Castigway chipped in with eight points as well in that first half. So what do we expect here in the second half? More press from the Purple Panthers, you, you, down 21? You have to make a dent in the, in the lead somehow. So do you switch? And I would switch if I was them. I'd go back to that zone press. They might have a better chance of... Not getting beat deep. Luckily, they get the ball first to start, so you want to score right away. But if you're going to press, you got to make sure you try and get some steals, get some turnovers quickly, make Wyndham make some mistakes. And then, you know, if you can cut the lead down in this quarter to about eight, you're going to feel really good about your chances to come back and catch up and make the fourth quarter close. South, after the team switch ends, going to work right to left. They go inside, and they get a banker. From their starting center. That's Daniel Karavanek. That's his first basket, I believe. Got two. two at the free throw line in that first half. And you're right, that's his first field goal. Now you're playing 2-3 zone, but they're coming way out and getting out of position. Three-pointer from the corner. Won't go. Karavanek, the board is third. Now trip into the lane. Pull-up jump shot. No good. Back iron. Katrobus on the glass for Wyndham. Point guard going to slow it down. Murphy was right into the rim. Too right easy. Into the lane Way too that easy. One. Way too easy, Nick. Nobody was there. No. That's just too easy. That makes you nuts as a coach. Just Where's the help? A little miscommunication, perhaps, defensively. It leads to another Jaguar bucket. Murphy, one of seven different players for Wyndham to score in that first half. Meanwhile, this one tipped out of bounds. The officials say last touch by the Jaguars. Take another look at the replay. I thought that Caruso touched it at the last second, but the look not. there, he may have pulled up just in time. Good There's call. that Wyndham student section. They're chanting defense, standing in their Christmas attire. Into the paint. Karavanic trying to pivot away from Roy, and he draws a foul. First he had his hand down low, then he got his hands up. So I'd like to see the replay. Maybe we can look at that foul. Where is that foul? He had his hands down initially. 
So I would say the foul would be there. Yep, and then he got the, the top part. He blocked it, but the foul was down low. So Karavanek went two for two with the stripe in that first half. Back at the line. South collectively only shot five free throws in that first mm, half. That's not very many. And guess what? They're collectively now seven of seven after that two for two trip. So a bright spot on what has otherwise been a gloomy night here for Nashua South. 41 22. Jaguars looking to get those two back, and they will. It's a long two. Straight away for the lefty Jack Murphy in double figures now with 11. Lead back to 21. Karavanic. Strong take, can't bank it. And a rebound pulled down in a crowd there by Collins. That'll draw a foul. A little frustrated. He missed that, that shot. Got frustrated. Came back. Got a foul. You're right. I said South was perfect. I lied. They're actually 7 of 9. <laughs> you don't lie. You never lie. I was mistaken. I didn't say anything. I was just going to lie. Then I saw it, and I went, oh, man, we better correct that just in case. Meanwhile, this kid's putting in work. That's Roy. Another rebound is eighth. Up and under, no. Tip from Begley goes off the rim. And finally wrestled free by Karavanek. Karavanek again blocked by Roy. Russo will go down the lane and leave this short. No, right. Wyndham continuing to get stops. Meanwhile, Roy, strong take. That one tipped out. Bounce pass. And a block shot. Roy able to swat it and then scoop it. And look out. Yeah, Katrobis landing hard. But the football player is okay as he bounces back up. There's some frustration. I, I, I wish Karavanic would catch the ball in the paint and not fake around so much, catch it, just go up. Because he's probably going to get fouled. He tends to catch it and not want to shoot that first shot. He fakes, he spins around, he'll pass it, or he'll force a tough shot. He needs to catch it and just decide, I'm going to go up and I'm going to score. And if I don't score, I'm going to get fouled. And it's tough to do against Brandon Roy, who is, it is. Benjamin it is. Roy, who has played about as good a post defense as we've seen so far with three block shots unofficially. Meanwhile, Katrobus... Goes one for two. The board is captured by a Cody for Nashua South. 44-22. Jaguars doubling up the Purple Panthers. Three minutes into this third quarter, and the defense chant returns from the student section. That'll be quieted by Samson Akote and his first field goal to three to make it 44-25. Needed that. Needed that. Absolutely. Begley. Good move. Good step around. Well, his footwork is impressive. He's the third Jaguar now in double figures with 11. That's just good, you know, spreading the ball around to your teammates. Everybody's getting good shots. Castaway's rebound won't go. The freshman, Roy Dulles, with the board for Wyndham. Nearing the midway point, third quarter. Back into a man. you got to play man. If you're going to catch up, I think you want to play man. And just pressure. Begley wants it in the post, double team. Behind the back, the bump. and a foul is called. Another bump, Caruso with a bump. Roy Dulles hit the deck. The foul from behind against Caruso, that's his second. That tricky behind the back pass. I was surprised he didn't go up. He had some size, but double team. Good double team by Nashua. Third team foul against South. In the paint. And that one rushed a bit, perhaps, by Radulis. Karavanic with five boards for South. Meanwhile, Caruso, strong take. Count it and the foul. Good move. That's the way to go strong. That's how you're going to come back. He's in double figures now with 10. As the foul occurs near the rim against Roy Dulles. And get it down to, to uh, 18 if he can make the free throw. At least you feel a little bit better. But He lifts it short and Murphy rips the rebound. Now we're a little three-quarter court press, 2-2-1. Two, two, Jaguars break it via the middle. Back into his zone. Murphy, deep three. Banker, no. Begley offensive rebound. 
to his right, the banker. Again, no good. Bonnie's hit the ground. Castaway, long outlet. Caruso, pump fake, and a foul. Good fake. Another good outlet pass by Castaway. Excellent outlet pass. You saw one of those back in the first half. Now, now you got to make the free throws, right? You get the, you get the turnover, the rebound. You come down, you got to make the free throws. Give yourself a chance. And again, collectively, they're over 70% now, 8 of 11. We got a timeout on the floor. Our broadcasts brought to you by Beals Insurance, locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance gets you the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. And finally, by the New Hampshire Tomahawks. Showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NHTomahawks.com and also girls.NHTomahawks.com. Nick Anastas, Justin Gorham with you here in Wyndham. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Of course, Wyndham has played with the lead tonight the entire way. Their largest lead coming at halftime when they led by 21. South trying to chip away ever since. With now three and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Still a ways to go for the Purple Panthers. Sometimes it's hard to maintain that lead for the entire time. And you've got to hope Nashua thinks, well, we can chip away. Like I said, if you can get it down right now, fourth quarter, you get it down to about eight. Even ten right now, you're going to feel pretty good. Yeah. You got to make the free throws. You got to get steals. You got to make sure you give them only one shot. Don't let them get the second and the third shot. So you got to rebound, but find any way you can. Energy, right? Bring energy. Caruso still full of energy, yeah. right? We need to see everybody has to play with that same energy here in the second half. Free throw, no good. Kind of a tight rim. Is that one about halfway down before it popped out? Meanwhile, another 15-footer for Katrobus. I love the 15-footer pull-up. Pretty-looking Jay there from the elbow. Makes it 48-28. Caruso slices to the rim and gets two more. That foul, too. Got hit. The tough move to the hole. Against the press, Bouchard has come on. Hands it to his point guard, Katrobus. Now Begley flashes free in the high post. Lost it from behind. Ball tipped out, Bouchard there, Akote on the floor, and a timeout is called by Coach Mazarol. Good call on the timeout. It's hard to tell if he had possession, so maybe in our replay, that's what Wyndham's concerned about. Did he have possession of the ball on the ground? So maybe here on our replay we'll be able to tell if he had possession. Akote while he was on his back, so no possession there, no possession he got there. Got his hands there. And then that's a tough one to tell there. I don't know. I didn't. Did he have it long enough? Or the official Richard Deshard was right there. He did. He, was, he, had, he had a better angle, I think, than we did. Yeah. So if he, if he saw that, yeah, a reminder: Friday night, we're back at it in Exeter, Pinkerton at Exeter, coming up at six thirty, with our broadcast beginning around six fifteen. It's a good way to start the holiday weekend. Absolutely. Two traditional contenders colliding in Division One. Again, it's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Pinkerton at Exeter, Friday night, 6.30. Right here on Friday Night Lights New Hampshire, presented by Beals Insurance. That should be an exciting game on Friday. Not that this one isn't, but that should be in Exeter, Pinkerton in Exeter. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. All right. 48-30, final three minutes here, third quarter. South again looking to cut into the deficit before the start of the fourth. Caruso trying to follow his own miss, can't get there. Begley is surrounded, lost the ball, tracks it down, looks for help in the middle of the floor, and has Bouchard. Now numbers for the Jaguars. Pull up jump shot. No good there for Andrew Hennessy, the senior. Offensive rebound by Bouchard, keeps it at this end. You do see more active hands, though, from Nashville South. Active hands, trying to get steals, finding any way they can to get, a, to get back in this game. Castaway with the foul. Katroba's going to head back to the free throw line where he went one of two a moment ago. It's four or five overall tonight at the stripe. This one in and out. Another sub. And South 
will bring the big man back on, Karavanek. A little more size on the floor for Coach Mazzarol as he takes out the guard, Aiden Clow. One for two trip there for Kotrobis as his stellar night continues. 16 points a game high. Layup is short. Begley's got his 11th rebound. Good backdoor cut, but a good block from behind. I think Final Caruso. two minutes. No look. Out of bounds. The freshman not quite ready. Caruso thought he got fouled in the last play, but he got him from behind. He got he great backdoor play, great bounce pass. He just got that, you know, that fortuitous block you get from behind if you're a sneaky defender. A rare Jaguar turnover. Just the fourth Wyndham giveaway tonight. Bakote follows his own miss and banks it in with the right hand. He's giving them a bit of a punch off the bench now with five points. Absolutely. A couple of boards and a steal as well. Final 100 seconds. The lead 17 again. Kutrobis lost it. Akote with the steal. Castigway is going to finish at the other end. And an immediate whistle and a quick timeout is called, I believe, by Coach Mazzarol. So it's 15-point lead, so what do you do? If I'm, I thought, I would have thought Wyndham might have called that timeout because now you're, you know, I'm not 15, sure who it was, but, to be honest. No, you might be, you might be right. To me, it looked like Coach Mazzarol called the timeout. But uh, Wyndham's got to be, you know, moderately concerned. It's, but but you, you expect a run to come, right? At some point in the game, you expect them to, like you said, more energy, more energy. So a little run comes, and now it's a 15-point lead. Yep. It's 21 at the break, 39-18. So 23 points in the first quarter First quarter for Wyndham, and now they only have 49. So that's not too bad. The South defense Yeah, the defense has gotten better. Offensively, they need to improve a little bit, but defensively, they've gotten better. Yep. All right. So Wyndham trying to withstand here this mini push from Nashua South coming out of the timeout. Looks like a zone press here, a 2-2-1 from the Purple Panthers. Now, see, you got to try and maybe trap the wing, force them to do something different, right? That's just too easy. Freshman's going to go to the hole. Banker, no. Begley is there again. Too easy on that first one. How about 13-12 and 12 for Begley unofficially? Castigway is blocked by Murphy. Good block. What do I always say? Pump fake. Well, he's got some spring in those legs. The lefty able to get off the floor and block that one with a strong hand. Here's that pump fake. He'll sail right by into the stands. Caruso goes around Murphy and Good has move. a finger roll. Good move. And he continues to slash. He's really a good, that's what he does best, I think. Slashes, cuts to the basket. Attacks the basket. And Akote is going to pick Murphy's pocket. Almost got it to go. And a foul in the act here with 42 seconds. He has been a nice little spurt off the bench defensively. He's got three steals right. now. Offensively, he's kind of get, you know, get to the line. Now he's just got to make the free throws. He missed a couple early, so he's got to make, make these free throws. And now all of a sudden, getting a little closer. It's his first trip to the line since the first half. Still 0 for 3. 51-36 it remains. Cote with one more. And that one is good. Rattles home. Not 2-2-1 two, two, still. Maybe you come up, try and trap. You want to force the ball sideline, try and trap the sidelines or trap right around half court. You can trap a little higher. That's okay too, but got to get a trap out of it somehow. You can't just let them walk through it. The knife through butter on the last two times down in the press. Petropas in trouble. Whips it for Bagley. And now a dicing move and a scooper is good for Jordan. I like that one. That was a that was a nice little clever move. The sophomore diagnosed the defense well there. Final shot belongs to South. Down to four seconds. Back door. Stepping into the two is Trip. Can't get it to go. 53-37, our score through three quarters. Wyndham looked like they were sailing to a win. South says not so fast, but still a hill to climb. Eight minutes to go on the other side. Somebody is going to leave the gym two and one.
Will it be Wyndham or South? We find out next. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Well, Wyndham so far has led wire to wire, gunning for their second win of the season. Week number two statewide here in New Hampshire. Nick Anastas, Justin Gorham with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance. Both these teams at 1-1. One and one. Wyndham led by as many as 21. That was the halftime margin. They begin the fourth quarter with a 16-point lead. Meanwhile, a jump ball is called here in the lane as Murphy... Left his feet, got tied up in midair, and the That's possession a, arrow belongs to the Purple Panthers. That's a Cody again. He comes in. Look what he does defensively. He gets a jump ball. He gets a couple steals. He hits a three. You know, didn't shoot free throws very well tonight, but he has been a nice spark off the bench for them, even yeah. though they're still behind, you know, by, what, 16? Castigway is going to bank this home. And the lead down to 14 now is the veteran Zach Castigway. Working on another double-figure night with 12 points. Got hit in the face there. He did. Able to finish anyway. and no chance for a three-point play. Foul, by the way, was on Jordan of Wyndham, his first. Free throw up and in. Make it a run, 13 points. Yep. It's the closest Wyndham has been since early in the first quarter. Man press. It's I beaten see. via the dribble by Katrobus. That's when you want to force him into a trap, too. A big fella. Caravanich should have come up. Maybe he kind of tried to trap after he forced him down the floor. Let's see if he can get something. Get a steal, right? Force a steal, force a turnover. That's why you press. I mean, you want to tire the guard out to bring the ball up, too. People, people don't realize how hard that is. If you're the point guard and you have to bring the ball up all the time, it wears you out, especially if a team presses and you're trying to dribble through it. Well, it's arguably the hardest position on the floor. Oh, it's very difficult. And one of the harder positions in sports, in my opinion. It's essentially, you know, the quarterback. You know, that in, in right. basketball, you're the quarterback. If, you, if you're a good point guard. Begley, you, little fade. Got it to go. Can't flop. No flopping. Anti-flop, not soccer. Begley, the senior, working on an impressive double-double tonight. 15 points and 12 rebounds. Meanwhile, another foul on the floor. Comes with a minute gone by here in the fourth quarter. Bit of a bailout. Didn't have to foul him. It's on the freshman, Roy Dulles, and that's his fourth. Second team foul against Wyndham. Went hard, though. Went hard to the basket. So Clout going to shoot. And the sophomore a little too strong there. His first trip to the line tonight. Subs for Wyndham. Roy is back on to play the middle. And Bouchard has got some pretty good length of his own on the floor as well. So Wyndham with one of their bigger lineups. Free throw is good. One for two trip there for Klo. See, now we sort of backed off the press. I liked it better when they're really up attacking. I think they, it, it has worked better for them, for Nashua South, to get up and attack. Katrobus lost it. Poked away by the defender. It'll stay with Wyndham. Coach DeRoja up at the corner. He's got that Bill Herrian style stance where he goes down on one knee. I'd never be able to get back up if I did that. <laughs> Katrobus the pull up. No. Roy in a crowd kept it alive. 
but ultimately it goes off his knee out that, of bounds. That's Karavonic actually battling inside. Again, he's battled a lot by himself yeah. in the paint. I give it to him. He's battled a lot by himself. Yeah, he's held his own tonight. Six points, five rebounds by my count. Yeah, and he's not getting really credit for that rebound. You could almost give him credit for it because he had it and it went off the guy's knee. But, you know, at least he was in there battling. And, you, and, if, and if you stop battling, then you've given up. And, and I don't think they've given up yet. No. Down 14, but the clock's starting to become a factor. Castaway to the rim. Banker no. There's Karavanic to his left. Challenged by Roy, and then it's Roy with a defensive rebound for Wyndham. It's his ninth board tonight. Murphy, teardrop, no. Begley, another offensive rebound and another putback. He has been a monster on the offensive glass tonight. Ah, turnovers. Well, our shorthanded cameraman, John Barron, protecting the equipment we over there in the corner. John. We can't have John get hurt and be down a cameraman. No, we don't need that. John, be careful down there. John, of course, who, moonslight, who moonlights as Santa Claus. During the weekend, he's got that big white beard. He'd fit right in tonight with the Wyndham student section. Well, I meant to a I did ask him about some things I want for Christmas, but, you know, <laughs> we didn't get to it yet. Meanwhile, Murphy stripped on the way up. Good hands on the defensive effort there by Josh Tripp. It'll stay at this end. Now, John, I want a Jeep Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer, John. <laughs> if you can make that happen for me, please. I love that car. It's over 100 grand. I really can't swing it right now. Two minutes in. Maybe. Happy holidays, of course, to everybody watching tonight. Appreciate you tuning in. It's been a fun one with Wyndham. Looking impressive. They, It's not often when you lose a game, but you still kind of make a statement. I think that was the case with the Jaguars Friday night and a one-point loss at Exeter. Absolutely. One of the state's perennial contenders in the, in the division. That but again. they're building on that tonight with what's been so far a wire-to-wire -wire lead. Meanwhile, foul going to come against the Nashua center, Karavonic. His second, now two team fouls each way through two and a half minutes in this fourth quarter. The old whack in the forehead foul, and, and I would, if I'm Wyndham, I'm coming away with this thinking we played really good defense, especially in the first half, yeah. and we, we rebounded the ball better than they did. Offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, they, they've been outstanding. And, and that's just, rebounding is effort, though. Rebounding is effort, and you know, being in the right position, but effort is number one. Karavanic in trouble. Bouchard's all over him. This one will stay here. That's been that kind of a night with the Jaguar defense. They have made things difficult. I'm Karavanic. that shot there. Ooh, I'm working on a jump hook if I'm Karavanic. He's about, what, 6'2", 6'3", maybe 6'4". Just a nice step in the middle jump hook. It's a nice back door. Good pass, good cut. Trips first bucket. Trying to keep hope alive here for South. Down 16. As we move towards three minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. There's that pocket pick again. Akote is fourth steal. The layup won't go. And it's Bagley who tracks it down. Begley. Quick three up and in. That was actually a really good shot. It was it was uh, three on one. And, and you a quick take layup the other way for Castaway. Blink and you miss it. Yeah, you did. And Ooh. South will get two quick ones, and then an immediate timeout is called by Coach Mazarol. So here we are, approaching the midway point, fourth quarter. Still a sizable lead for Wyndham at 62-45. Yeah, they haven't made it. Well, a, a, a tiny dent. They made a little run, so you have to expect that, right? Wyndham has held them off, increased the lead again. And that, if you look like that last play, great steal. Again, Okote comes in and does what he's been doing, gets a steal. But... Wyndham came down, and it used to be a coach would go nuts, berserk, if you pulled up and shot a three on a break. Right. But now you have a three on, it was a three on one with Nashua trailing. So you have two Wyndham players down low to rebound that missed shot, right? So that's actually a good shot. I'm going to shoot the three. If I miss it, I have two players, right. my teammates, to probably at least get a shot tonight. They're going to get a rebound. They're going to yep. get a chance at an offensive rebound. So yep. that's actually a really good shot. I used to go, I, I, I too used to hate that shot. But now the game has changed to the point where you go, but then you have to look at it and go, oh, I see it. Three on one. Three. Yeah, take that shot. Plus a shooter like Katrobus. Yeah, he shot the You're ball okay really well. I'm okay with him shooting that. All but right, Jaguars will have to deal with the press here. It's a full court man no, by he, South. They're going to clear it out for Murphy. 
I think we need a little more. They need a little more pressure, a little more urgency right now to, to kind of, if you want to come back. Long two. Murphy, he's shot the ball well. You 13 can, points, six since halftime. You can tell right now Coach Maserol wants urgency. He's just not getting it. It's a turnover. That's Looks like stuck. the ball got kind of caught. It did, stuck on his hip. On the hip there, and Caruso reluctantly gives it back to Wyndham. The Wizard will show us in the replay. There it is, right there, a little hip, drag. Good call by the official. Begley, a spin in the post, sets up Murphy for three. In and out, and then batted out of bounds back to south. Well, coming up after the game, we're going to speak with the winning head coach. If this lead holds up, that means it's the first-year man, Carson DeRose's turn on the hot seat here. Just kidding. We'll be friendly as we always are. We will. But coach will join us live. And, of course, stats, highlights, analysis, and a scoreboard watch as well. This is a good fadeaway for Karavanek. His third field goal tonight as he approaches double figures now with eight. Midway through this fourth quarter, 64-47. Wyndham make it 66-47. Murphy adds two more to his total. He's got 15. Make him go right. Caruso blocked by Murphy. When Murphy gets off the floor in a hurry, his second block. There now a long pass is going to lead to a Roy layup. And a Nashua South timeout. Yeah, that's another play that makes your coach net nuts. Well, you know, you, they good save down on their end. I'm trying to figure out where the rest of the Nashua team was on that save on the inbound. But then they didn't get back on defense either. So that's really frustrating for a coach. Good save in the corner. Good save along the baseline there by Begley. And then the home run pass. Wide open. Murphy. On target to Roy, and there's the layup. Yeah, that's very frustrating. They're working really hard to try and come back, and they're giving up, you know, wide open layups down the floor. So 68-47, the lead is back to 21, where it was at halftime. That's been the high water mark tonight, as Wyndham has led throughout, hoping to improve to two and one. They got things started a week ago tonight with a 53-50 win over Spalding. Followed that up. With, as we mentioned, a one-point loss at Exeter in a pretty good early season measuring stick game. Oh, Speaking absolutely. of Exeter, we're going to see absolutely. them take on Pinkerton. Astros in the short list of contenders in Division One. Exeter, of course, a perennial power. We'll be on the air around 6.15 Eastern Friday with the tip coming your way at 6.30. That's, again, Pinkerton at Exeter in our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. It doesn't matter the, the level of play right now. There's an Exeter. I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen them. But it, if you play them at Exeter, they're going to play you tough. It yep. doesn't matter who you are. You show up and you're Pinkerton. You're supposed to be really good. They're going to play you tough anyway. doesn't matter. He does, Coach does such a good job. All right, the final 320 here. Pass deflected at midcourt. It's going to go out of bounds, and it's going to stay. Ooh. with Nashua South. By the way, there's a new player on the floor for the Purple Panthers. That's the junior, Leo DiPaolo, getting his first action. Okote thought about the drive. Instead, pulls it up and gives up the dribble. I like that. Is he a transfer maybe from Brooklyn? Leo DiPaolo, I like that. <laughs> Here's a jump shot. Cousin Leo. Castaway, able to pump midair. Good shot. Good shot. He's quietly been effective tonight. Now it's 17, a team high for South. Begley's night continues. Yeah, he wanted the foul, but, you know, right now you're up you're up 21. You're not going to get that call. Begley very with often. 19. Two passes. DePaulo is blocked by Begley. It's up high off the floor for that one. Uh, Akode has been outstanding on defense. You can tell he just watches the ball handler and just, just picks it, just takes it away. He's got quick hands. He's got four steals. You almost wonder, does he box? Because those are quick hands, that boxing hand. Mm. Three-pointer. A good look for Katrobus. Can hit. And a weak side rebound pulled in by Tim Stavelli. Pull up for Caruso. A little too deep. And Roy's got his 10th rebound for the Jaguars. Man, how, many, how many of those Wyndham Jaguars have 
10 or more rebounds right now on your sheet? Because I know I'm doing. I've got at least two in double figures and one with eight. Wow. They, they, just, they have been just relentless on the glass. And Meanwhile, here, fan favorite, a fan, fan favorite. favorite. Okay, looks fan like favorite. is about to check in for Wyndham. That's Sing, Sing, that's Puneet Singh, Puneet Singh, junior guard. One of four players now huddled up by the scorers' table, set to come on. I like that. I like getting those guys in. They come to practice every day. They work hard. You're up twenty, you know, twenty-two points. Hey, let's get those guys. Look, look, Coach Masrol emptied his bench. This is what this is what's supposed to happen yep. at the end of a game like this. You're not supposed to have weird pride issues, and we're going to keep fighting. You, you're not going to win. So get everybody a chance to play. That's what it's about, right? Have some fun. Katrobus' night will end at the free throw line as he knocks that one down. Now I'm rooting. I want to see uh, Puneet Singh score. The fans love him. Let's see what he. Does. The fans are going to go nuts if he scores. By the way. Final minute 55. I like to see what the reserves do too. The guys, some of these guys are probably swingers. You know, they're coming up from the JV team. Maybe their first or second time playing varsity. What's going to happen? Free throws time. There we go. You got to reach in here. So Singh picks up the foul, and we'll have a word with Coach DeRose. This could be Rajendran's opportunity. To get his name in the in the uh, newspaper in the scores. Yeah, that's Naveen Kumar Radindran, you, you, senior. What? Say that again. You did really well with that. Naveen Kumar. Ra Naveen Nav Kumar. Navindran. Oh, I like that. That was good. You did a he good got job the free throw. with that. Pretty good stint there at the line. Goes two for two. Yeah, outstanding. Final ninety-five seconds. Pick and roll. Pass though. Is too strong and turned Foot over. On the line. It was the pink shoes. You could see it very easily with the pink shoes. Eight turnovers tonight for Wyndham. They've, for the most part, took pretty good care of the basketball. They did. They did. Aren't those 24, aren't those like similar to your shoes that you wear, Nick? Those pink ones, your, your <laughs> basketball shoes? No, pink is not my style, typically. I bet John could get us a pair of those as Santa John. <laughs> Santa John, can you get us a pair of those pink shoes, please? I like them. I do like the looks of them. I'm a huge fan. DePaulo is foul. It's a good out-of-bounds play there. It's going to send the junior to the free throw line. It'll stop the clock with a minute 19. Anytime you get a shot, a good shot on an out-of-bounds play, I think it's a great out-of-bounds play. Because I always think if you're going to have an out-of-bounds play, you should always try and score. Yeah. I, I can't stand it when guys just throw the ball across half court and way in the back because you don't have an out-of-bounds play to run or a side out-of-bounds play or a – Anytime you take the ball out, you should try and score. Look, there's John. <laughs> hey, John. He's used to pointing the camera at others. I'm not yeah, sure how comfortable yeah. he is. With I don't know either. I think he was coming a back bit. at him. There's a three up and in. Hi That's Jackson Blanco, the junior. That's good. Puts go a little over. gasoline into the fire here late for Wyndham. DePaulo, a one-handed uh, rebound. Leo is a beast. And then a foul on the way back up. A, a strong throw. move in a crowd, and it comes with a minute remaining. Well, Cousin Leo, he's he's moving some guys out of the way, I'm telling you right now. Cousin Leo is moving some guys. He's got some strength. Oh, yeah. And he's going to knock down the free throw here I'm, on the roll. I'm thinking he might be a football player. I can't say for sure, but I, I would think maybe. And he's had that physical approach. Free throw is good. I always used to like to find a football player like that, and you bring him in, and he just sets screens. And you say, all right, we want you to be mean, tough. You have five fouls to give. Set screens, rebound, and just, you know, be a tough guy. Don't hurt anybody, but be a tough guy. Make people know that you're there. Yeah. And they don't want to come in on you anymore. Like, you're going to take, you're, you're going to take a charge if you have to, and they're going to pay for it. Three won't go. Jordan, the offensive rebound. Down to 35 seconds. Back up top, a three on the way for Hennessy. Can't get it to follow the rebound. South the other way. And they'll slow it down now with 25 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. So Wyndham looking good tonight on their way to a wire, wire win. They led by 21 at half. They lead by 21 here with 15 seconds remaining. Bodies on the floor. It ends back up with South. DePaulo can't bank it. Second try. Going to go up. Almost got the roll. But a foul comes with four seconds remaining. 
Look at that. He comes in the game. He's got two offensive rebounds. Hits three three free throws. Two, yeah, free, th two free throws. My fault. Two free I've throws. I've got him three for four at the line. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just didn't have the bad X in there. Some productive minutes here in the fourth quarter off the bench for the junior. He's going to hit the free throw there. He's now hit four in a row. Four seconds. A little too late, however, for Nashua South as Wyndham is going to win this one big. By what looks like a final score of 75 to 56. You know so what, though? They got the lead under 20. It's a 19 point win, so. You know. It's a good win for the Jaguars. Absolutely good as win. As their fans celebrate here on Christmas week, they're 2 and 1. They rebound from a one point road defeat against Exeter with a 75 to 56 victory over Nashua South. So a 2 and 1 record in year number one for head coach Carson. To Rose. He's going to join us live on the other side of the break. We'll be back with highlights, stats, analysis, full recap, and a Tuesday night scoreboard as well. Coach Live on the other side, you are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, Summer and fall elite teams. So play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another athletic program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. All right, we're back here in Wyndham, where the final score is Wyndham 75, Nashua South 56. And we're joined now by first-year Jaguar head coach Carson DeRose. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Good Your win, squad Good looked win. impressive tonight. They came yes. ready to play. The defense forced a number of turnovers, seemed to set the tone early. And your guys went hard, frankly, for 32 minutes on the way to a double-digit 19-point win. Your initial thoughts on what you saw here tonight? Yeah, you just said 32 minutes. I think we played about 24 minutes. Um, lost that third quarter, fourth quarter. Kudos to the guys for stepping up in the beginning of that fourth and getting that lead back up to a comfortable 16, 18, 19 points. We hang our hats on defense. That's the first game where... The coaching staff has felt that their guys are bought in for most of the game. We've had some lapses uh, versus Spalding versus Exeter, and we've gotten into some trouble. In that game, we put our foot on the gas, and we didn't let up. Yeah. Still, your team almost beat Exeter on the road, a one-point loss. What was the vibe after that game? I know it can be tough to lose a nail-biter like that, but sometimes... It inspires confidence as well. How confident was this group going into tonight? Yeah, we had two practices since the since the Exeter game. Uh, you know, preaching positivity, looking at the good things that happened. That lull I was just talking about, we had a pretty big one in that game, went down by 15. Um, and it takes a lot to come back, and unfortunately we fell short. But the practices, you know, kudos to the captains, uh, Jack Begley and Jack Atrobis, to make sure the guys were ready to go. And we had two of our better practices of the year getting ready for Nashville South. Well, you mentioned Begley. Unofficially tonight, how about 19 points and 15 rebounds? What does he mean to the club? He's, I, I was quoted in, in, in uh, earlier this season saying he's a glue guy who can score the basketball. 
Uh, he's going to lead us in scoring a number of games. Uh, he already has led us, I believe, and I think he's our leading scorer in all three. Um, and he just he does everything. He, he, he plays controlled. He slows us down when needed. He's a guy that we can give the ball in the perimeter to as a big man mm. when the other big man is guarding him. So it mm. kind of gives a couple of our guards a break, and uh, he's somebody you can trust on the floor. I, I was very impressed defensively. I saw you guys doing you know shell drill and warm-ups. You don't see that too often. But you did it in warm-ups well. But, but the thing was I enjoyed you carried it over in the game. And I, we were talking about guys you know getting their hands in the passing lane, defending the backdoor cuts, helping each other out, communicating. And pushing their offense out, you know, past the, the volleyball line. So, I mean, that, if you can play defense that way, I think you guys are going to be you're going to be very tough to beat if you play that way. Yeah, it's something coming from Central Catholic, uh, playing there and then coaching there the last few years. That's been something again that the coaching staff has really tried to emphasize up here in New Hampshire is is getting after it defensively. Um, again, I'm proud of our 24 minute effort tonight. Um, and if we can, you know, build on that and, and take the positives from tonight, which there were quite a lot of. Um, you know, we're going to, again, be a tough out as the year goes on. Oh, absolutely. And you got a lot of wide open shots, too. You had guys that run to the basket, and you're looking down the floor. It's unselfish. It's a very unselfish group because you have some guys that can shoot and probably could have shot even more shots. Yep. yep. But very unselfish, and you had wide open shots underneath the basket just running the floor. Yeah, that's been a theme of the first three games is we've had uh, 10 to 14 open shots. The first two games we weren't hitting them. We hit a couple of them tonight. And that's just guys having confidence, knowing that I'm never going to take you out for, a, for an open shot. If you miss two, three in a row, I don't want to be able to see it on your face. I want you to look exactly how you looked if you made two or three in a row. Well, that's, that's a guy you want to play for, yeah. to be honest, yeah. Coach, what's it mean to be back in Wyndham as the head coach of the local high school? Yeah, it, it's special. Um, obviously, when I played in high school, the, the high school wasn't built yet. But this is a, a school and a program that I've kept my eyes on. I volunteered for a year when I was done playing overseas just once or twice a week to stay around the game. And when the position opened up, that was something that I kind of jumped at. You know, I, I uh, have been working with the youth in town. I have a fifth grade and a seventh grade AAU team um, with a lot of kids from town. So trying to build the youth program, it, it, which has already been established, but trying to add my own flavor to that um, is going to, you know, hopefully pay dividends for us down the road. And in terms of being in my hometown, you know, it's a small town, it's a small town feel. Um, all, uh, all, both home games so far, both bleaches have been out, and we're going to work on the support in the community. And if we continue to put out a good product like we did tonight, I think yeah, you know, the town will rally yeah. around us and, oh, yeah. and, and you know, we'll be ready to compete every single night. Oh, Impressive absolutely. stuff tonight, Coach. Yeah, Thank congratulations. You. Thank you for coming on. Good I game to watch. I appreciate good game the coverage. I appreciate your, your staff, and uh, can't wait to watch it with the uh, commentary. Oh, it'll look good, no doubt. No we, doubt. Look, we look good as well, but <laughs> the broadcast will look really good. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you for having me. it. Happy holidays. And again. Bang up job by Carson DeRose, the first year head coach at Wyndham. 75 56 is the final score, Justin. Your thoughts? Well, I think we, we covered it right there. Defensively, they were outstanding. If they play defense that way throughout the season, there's not many teams that will you know, play defense that way consistently. You, know, you do it in spurts. And he said he, you know, he, got, he felt like he got 24 minutes out of them. Probably that third quarter, you know, they got beat that third quarter. But that was just one of those things where Nashua had to, you have to do something, right? right? You have to come out with energy, and they, you know, I don't think they did early. The second half they did, but they just got so far down that they couldn't come back. But I think going forward, both these teams, you know, Nashua South will improve, and I think Wyndham will only get better. So I'm looking forward to seeing them both as we move forward. Some other scores tonight, Nashua North. Is three and zero following a seventy four fifty nine win. Sorry, seventy four thirty nine win ooh, ooh. over Timberlane. That's a big win in Division One. Goffstown, a lead over Central, fifty to forty three. The fourth quarter about to begin in G Town. Salem with a win tonight. They're three and zero, sixty four to fifty four over Spalding. And at last look, Portsmouth led Londonderry by ten at halftime, thirty four to twenty four. I got West going 72 to 49, winning that game. But I'm drawing a blank who they played. He didn't send it to me when he. I, I asked who they played. So <laughs> I'm trying to remember who they played. But I know they won 72 to 49. And I know you want to hear that score because you're. I do. An alum. That's right. All right. Want to thank John Hall and his right hand man Matt for doing a bang up job, making oh. our lives easier. Working it's with always. John before the game. So uh, appreciate the effort there from the Wyndham. Athletic Department, and of course, got to thank our 
dual videographers. Of course, the John Barron took a little ribbing tonight, but he did. But he deserves it. Well deserved. To. And of course, Cat Doyle. Cat Man do. Doing a great job. And of course, the whole thing orchestrated by the man behind the curtain, the wizard of replay, our director, Ben Beals, back in the Beals Insurance the man Studios. The curtain. And the whole thing is overseen by the big man in the big chair down in the Sunshine State, executive producer. Steve Beals. Every time you say that, it makes I get really jealous every time you say every that. Every time I say that, it seems like it gets colder wherever we are. So I'm starting to <laughs> shiver thinking about him, and there's this 75 degrees, and he's got his shirt off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see you Friday, as yeah. we remember. Oh, it's yeah. Pinkerton Exeter coming up at 6.30 in our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Game of the Week will be on the air at about 6.15 again Friday. It's Pinkerton at Exeter. That's the final score Barber. here for the final time. Wyndham, 75. Nashua South, 56. This has been a presentation of our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance.